Peace World. Um, another episode here, Plot and Progress, episode 19. 19. Thank you for joining us. You can be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with us. So I appreciate you for doing that. Um, be sure to like, share, subscribe, tell all your good people about what we're doing, um, sharing the knowledge, hopefully um, to inspire um, action. That's, uh, that's paramount. Um, we have a very special guest with us tonight. Uh, we will introduce her shortly. But before you, we do that, you know what we got to do. We got to keep our, our tradition going here as uh, 80s babies, right? We're the best, <laughs> if I say so myself. We hip-hop is. So we're going to get into the bars for, for tonight to set the theme of what we're speaking on tonight. Go ahead, brother. Okay. We uh, so we're going to do who spit those bars. Uh, Y'all might know this. We're on the West Coast, so y'all might know. Well, that's a hint. My bad. Damn. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite songs, one of my mom's favorite songs. Uh, I started off. It's time to come up. Put your dollar bill in the air that said, meet me in the White House, and I was oh, dead. Because I'm one in a million. <laughs> oh, Black man rising. They oh, trying to did. keep us down, but I'm always surviving. I spent my money did. in the hood. Oh. I know it's all good. You should do the same. Yeah. Peep the game. Right. <laughs> right. so let me, hold on. One more, one let, more, more. You gonna give it up? Let me say this, bro. That's my favorite rap song of all time, bro. Are you serious? That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Too short. Getting it. Hey, that was the too short was spin some of the most conscious bars you could ever hear. That's my Don't favorite wax. song, like ever, bro. I love yeah, that man. song. Yeah, man. That's my mom's favorite joint. From. <laughs> A to Z, yeah. from top to bottom, yeah. he was on there kicking so much game. That's a great one. Yeah, I know y'all was going to guess it. But, uh, <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't use that one. Yet, man. I'm surprised I didn't use that one. That was a good one. That was a good yes, one. Sir. So, all right, we're going to pivot off of that. I'm in a good spirit now, man, because that's, <laughs> that's, that's my joint right there. Um, right. Let's get into our guest for this evening. Um, we have Stacy on board. Um, I'm not going to speak for her. I'm going to turn the mic over to her um, so she can do a brief introduction. Oh, and I think I jumped the gun on this. Um, I think we had a visual to share um, before we oh. jump into that introduction. Yeah, we did. We did. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Brief video. That was what we're talking about, nestled next to downtown Atlanta, but this okay. neighborhood was really special. This is where they have the highest concentration of black landowners and entrepreneurs in the country, right here. The country, that's right. Ayana Crystal is live in Atlanta with more on that. And so Ayana, take us through, because those of us who are here in Atlanta, we take it for granted, but there sure is a huge story behind it. That's exactly right, Sharon. People who live here don't even understand or know the extent of the history here in Castleberry Hill. And it is so interesting and intricate. And there's so many great things that are going on in this community. It's so special. And when it comes to black businesses investing and staying in their neighborhood to support the black community, there's no other place in the country that is doing it. This neighborhood is historic, but it is still growing and thriving. I guess you could say African Americans supporting African Americans has been tremendous. What's up, fella? It's a community like no other in the country. What's happening here in Castleberry Hill really is the largest concentration of black owned dirt, um, black owned operators, and a black clientele in the United States. We support one another. It looks like our own built in, built in ecosystem. So. It's been, it's been great for us. The colorful and creative neighborhood took its name from young merchant Daniel Castleberry. In the 1800s, it was known as Snake Nation, a ragtag group of bootleggers, gamblers, prostitutes, and literal snake oil peddlers. Then in the early 1980s, artists began populating the old warehouse lofts, and now it's considered the largest concentration of Black-owned businesses in the country. It has really gone from this sort of sleepy industrial neighborhood to this kind of about to happen residential neighborhood to this very happening business community. 
This mural of the late Herman J. Russell pays homage to him for transforming the area. Russell built one of the nation's most profitable minority-owned business empires. The Atlanta businessman inspired other black entrepreneurs to invest in Castleberry Hill. My feelings on Castleberry, thank you, Russells. <laughs> and that's A.J. Russell. <laughs> because that is what made, made me come to Peter Street. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the area is the most complete surviving warehouse district in Atlanta. Many of those historic buildings have since been converted to lofts, art galleries, and shops. It probably was the best move I had made in my entire barber career. So it's been great. Carl Booker has been the owner of Off the Hook Barbershop on Peter Street since 1998. And with so many areas in Atlanta gentrifying, he says that won't happen in Castleberry Hill. Everyone's sticking to their guns and remaining and owning their property. So as long as they keep that keep going, no matter what the growth around it, we all exist. Since 1984, Alfonso Cross's family has owned three quarters of an acre on Peter Street. He and his sister have run Parlor, a craft cocktail den, since 2018. There's a lot to be said for um, being part of a fabric of black land ownership and black operators um, that allows us all to look each other in the eye and know that we're all sort of part of something, a part of a, a story that's bigger than ourselves and, and will certainly continue on for decades and decades to come. A display of cultural unity in this neighborhood where black business owners have found a place to thrive. It's a very flourishing black um, and diverse, culturally diverse. So, that okay. was a pretty dope video. Absolutely, that's fascinating. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so back to the introduction of our guest, um, Stacy, if you could um, share um, who you are, where you're located, um, what you specialize in, what you provide to the market. So um, my name is Stacy. My last name is Waller. Um, I am in Hartford, Connecticut. So I am way on the other side <laughs> from where you guys are. Um, East Coast. Yes, yes, sir. So by day, um, I'm a licensed master social worker, and currently I am um, working as a school social worker. So my background is in social work. That's kind of like my nine to five, I say my career, what I do during the day. Um, but I'm, I'm also a entrepreneur. Um, as you can see behind me, I have Miss Holistic, which is um, a consultant brand that I have. Um, so I do health and wellness consulting. Um, I wear many, many hats. Um, I'm also in, in real estate and investing in real estate. Um, me and my family, we own several multifamily properties. I've been doing that for over 25 years. Um, I flipped my first house at like 25 years old. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, totally. it was, and, and it wasn't like intentional. It was more so like we had a dream and a plan to like just buy a three family house so that we could live rent free. And, you know, at that time, my father, uh, rest his soul, he passed. My father was a master carpenter, so he could build the house from the ground up. So, you know, me and my kid's father at the time, we, we purchased the home. We fixed it up. It just needed like cosmetic work. And like five years later, we sold it, we doubled our money. And that was kind of like how we got into real estate. It was not really to get in, like get into real estate really. Um, it was again, more so like, how can we as, you know, a young family kind of like, you know, make ends meet and, you know, just, we were just doing it to again, like live rent free. Yes, we knew that, you know, it was making us like passive income, but we were like just getting our feet wet. And so, from that point on to moving forward, my mom ended up buying a three family house. I ended up buying another multifamily property. Um, and then my kid's father, he ended up buying multifamily properties. Then my son, who was 19 years old, he just took it to a whole nother level. He studied YouTube, he started doing wholesaling. Um, at 19 years old, he did his first deal, made $30,000. And for us, we were like, not really scared, but we just was like, that's not traditional. Like we're used to just going to the bank, making sure your credit is good, get a, you know, get a loan, get a mortgage. And so pay on in, we, that's it. 
so when he came with this different approach, we kind of was like, no, nah, we don't know about that. Like, you know, but then he showed and proved. And so he, he, he taught himself. He literally just was like on YouTube. He was like studying it, teaching himself. And now he's like in it heavy and he's done multiple deals. Um, and he, now he's 24 years old, but he's like, you know, also in real estate, but he's coming from like a different angle where we still kind of, you know, old school. So we kind of go the traditional, the traditional path. Um, but basically my family and I, we own several multifamily, multifamily properties. Um, right now where I'm sitting, we also own, um, a smoothie cafe and venue. And so in this venue, during the day, we sell smoothies, we sell vegetarian foods, but then we also rent this space out for, um, like we had a couple of birthday parties, we do repasses, we, you name it, we've, we've done it, vision board parties. Um, and so this is just a space where like, you know, people can come in, hang out, little lounge area. So like I said, we are like serial, people say, you know, serialpreneurs, like they have multiple businesses. That's pretty much, that sums me up because like I said, I'm kind of like have my hand in like different kind of different businesses. Um, so primarily to sum things up, that kind of like explains like, you know, who I am, what I do. Um, and I, you know, I've been, like I said, in real estate, I've been a landlord, I've been a property manager for 25 plus years. Um, but now what tr attracted me to you guys is we are now like looking to, to get land. And so, um, my grandfather and my, my grandmother on my father's side, um, they owned a home and land in Alabama, um, lots of land, um, that is just sitting, um, the house is just sitting, nothing is being done with it. And so my goal is to gather up all of the cousins that's my age that would um probably be interested in even maybe trying to develop some of the land um because i know like my older aunts and uncles and things like that you know most of them are retired they're not really i don't think and i could be speaking too fast but you know we've had some conversations um and i don't think they're just willing to like take that on right now at you know where they are in life which is which is understandable and fine um so like I said, what attracted to me, me to you guys is I noticed that um, you guys are all about buying land. Um, and so that is what I would like to do. That would be like my next step is like, um, like okay, we have a, a couple of properties, um, but now for me, where is that is land, getting land, developing land, like, you know, self-sustaining, having, um, you know, a compound, a homestead, like that's, really really what i want to focus on in the next two to five years um that's my goal yeah no doubt no doubt uh no, no first off salute to what you're doing is awesome uh, a serial entrepreneur uh I, I read in a few books that most millionaires have several streams of income you gotta have your hands in multiple cookie jars you feel me so oh, yeah I, I think that's dope what you're doing um right. regarding looking into the land um i i think and then what you're already doing it's all still black excellence this this podcast is based on black excellence you just doing you know we we playing football you playing soccer you feel <laughs> me so it's the same shit you know what right. i mean like land ownership real estate you know what i mean like the, the the video we just watched black dirt you know black dirt black land so and uh me and Bilal's family from alabama so nice oh, wow. that, that, yeah oh. that y'all want to go there too so that's awesome man i'll kick it off to the panel anybody got some questions for her yeah. Um, first and foremost, again, uh, shout out to your family because uh, y'all doing it on another level. Thank you. And a uh, special shout out to, um, and pardon me, can't recall if it was your father or your grandfather that was a master carpenter. My but, father. Okay. It sounds like he served as a catalyst to kind of seed um, what has blossomed into um, generational wealth, right? It's that term that we, we throw around, uh, which is a great thing, you know, because I feel like when you know, things are being put out in, into the universe at a certain capacity, it, it starts to come to fruition. So that's that's amazing. So you did speak to um, your family or at least your vision as far as what you want to scale into, considering that you already have um, experience um, managing properties and now you want to get into land development. Mm -hmm. um, 
what let's say just to jump ahead a little bit um you have the land um you've gotten through the developmental stages now when it comes to operation maintenance and sustainability what have you learned and what would be like some key words of advice for people to consider in terms of managing you know property that is established how do you prioritize that how do you um how do you even go about identifying like this is going to be a good investment or not what does that look like for you um so for me when it comes to um like properties i'm not sure if this works um with with land i would imagine that it, it's it's not it's similar um but for like a, a property especially like a um it doesn't have to be a multi-family house it could be a single family home but for me primarily um i want to get something like obviously like way below market value um and i don't mind a little sweat equity as a matter of fact like like i said my first house um it just it, it needed a lot of cosmetic work thankfully it wasn't anything like major but it was a lot of cosmetic work that we put in into the to the home um so I, again i'm not afraid of you know getting like putting in a little sweat equity so i would target like homes that need some work like you know the distressed properties the properties that um you know maybe is a tired landlord and i'm and i'm literally these terms that i'm using i actually got, uppers. i got from my son who does wholesaling because he'll drive by a property and he's like look the grass is high or look you know that's <laughs> like the landlord either doesn't live there or the landlord is like you know probably old and so right you're looking for a property where like obviously you can have um some equity in it when you get it so that way if you do put a little bit of work in it um and you maybe hold the property for a little bit if you decide to you know sell it or or flip it or refinance it you're gonna have some serious equity in the home so me personally like all of the deals that i have done like even the house that i own now i bought about seven or eight years ago um easily like like i'm, I'm so like tempted to sell the house because like it's, it's so much more than what I paid for it that I sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna just cash out. I'm gonna just cash out and just, you know, take that money and go buy some, some land somewhere and start over or whatever. But to kind of go back to um, your question, you know, and I have friends that always ask me too, like, you know, how do I know if it's a good deal or how do I know? Primarily again, like you want to get something below market value. If the house is worth 300,000, you don't want to pay, 285 299 for even though that's still a little bit of equity in it but it's not really a it's not a it's no wiggle room like any little thing if the market falls you know it's it's no wiggle room so primarily you you want to get a house that you're going to have equity from day one and whether that's a fixer upper whether that's you know a, a property that just needs a little bit of cosmetic work um that is what i would you know recommend and even if i was to go out and purchase a new home today I'm always looking for a deal, like always, always looking for a deal so that I can have equity um, from day one. I, I I see, I can already see some of the uh, similarities as you mentioned, as far as like land and, and real estate as well. As it, it has to be that same approach as well as just the uh, the willingness to put in that, that sweat equity that can take you far because it's definitely going to take sweat equity with the land once you acquire that. So if right. you're already familiar with it, coming with your real estate background and the the uh, the uh, like I said, willingness to do mm -hmm. that sweat equity, you're a few steps ahead of the game already. To be honest, yeah, and I agree because you know, um, again, I have friends that they're always asking me, you know, trying to just kind of you know get some advice as to whether they should, you know, buy rental properties or, you know, um, investment properties. And I tell people all the time, I can give you the exact blueprint of what I did, but that does not mean that you're going to have the same results or the same outcome because there's too many variables. For example, um, when I was first getting into real estate, I promise you, I had so many people say, oh, you know, they try to discourage me. They try to talk me out of it. Oh, well, the landlord um, is responsible if the, the, the heating system breaks down. 
And I'm like, yeah, they are responsible for that. Oh, well, what if the tenant is, you know, uh, a bad tenant and they destroy your property and, you know, all the what ifs. It was like all the what ifs and all the, and like I said, I've been doing this for 25 years and I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't dealt with some of those situations, but because like you said, it's something that I want to do. It's something right. that I enjoy doing. It's something that like I have the will to do it and the passion to do it. When those challenges come up for me, it's like, they don't stress me out. You know, even in the in the very beginning, like I said, I had my father. He could fix anything. He could put down new floors. You name it, he could do it from the ground up. And then he started teaching my kid's father how to do some of those things. And so then now he's he literally took over where my father left off. Like now he can do everything from just just about everything and whatever he can't okay. do, we'll hire a professional. So to kind of answer your question. If you're not really in it to really, really be in it, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Say, say that again one more time. If you, you, ain't, if you ain't now, get the, if you ain't now, get the hell out the game. If you're not in it to be in it, then it's not going to work for you. Because as soon as something difficult comes about, you are going to bail or you're going to you're going to fumble. And then you're going to be like, like, like I had a young, a younger cousin. She's like, well, who's going to cut the grass for me? And. Who's, and I'm like, you either do it yourself or you pay somebody to do it. And if you can't afford to do it, then that's when you got to learn how to do these things. But again, everybody don't have that mindset. Everybody don't have that, you know, that, that outlook. And right. so for me, I'm like, it was something that I just wanted to do. It was something that I wanted to do. And for me, the benefits outweighed all of the, the what ifs and the negatives. And I have good tenants. I screen my tenants. I do background checks and my tenants, all of my tenants, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year tenants. Like I don't have a revolving door because I don't just let anybody up in my property. And right. I had a property, uh, an apartment set for over a year one time because number one, I wasn't letting just anybody come up in there and I was busy and I really didn't have time to like really screen and like do interviews like I wanted to do. So the property literally well, what sat. What a beautiful blessing. I was, and you know what? And, and, that, and that's, that, that's true. I gotta, I can't take that out of it. Like I was in a position where I was, I could afford to do that. Not really, but I was. Right. It wasn't like really causing a really financial strain on me. So I was in that position where I like, you know, it sat for like over a year. And I just was like, I'm just not letting anybody in here. And I would time to time interview some people or they would fill out an application and, it, and and they just wasn't the right fit and i was just like i'm sorry but i'm just not gonna rent this out to anybody so well, I, I got it i got a two-part question so how how important is location when it comes to real estate and then also uh are all of your is your real estate all in the same area location or how, how do you does that matter to you at all okay so yes so location is very, very important. And all of my properties are within like five minutes of each other. And so from a landlord's perspective, because I am what they call a very present landlord. I'm not an absent landlord because again, all of my properties are like in the same vicinity. So I can get to them very quickly. Um, and then if I have like the plow person come, because we get a lot of snow here in Connecticut, then he can hit each one of them without you know a problem so when it comes to stuff like that is is very very important especially if you're going to be doing it yourself and so a lot of the work we do ourselves which is where truthfully which is where the the how i what i would consider the profits that it's is more in it. it's more in and out profit is if you can do a lot of the work yourself even me, I'm very, very handy. I, I, I will paint, I will buff, I will like trim, tape, you name it. I've done it. I've tried it. I'm very, I'm very handy. I'm very helpful. So if you can do a lot of the work yourself, that's where a lot of your profit, you, you'll see your profit because you're, you're doing most of the work yourself. Um, but back to your question. So location is very, very important. And for me, I live in Hartford, born and raised in Hartford. I don't know if you guys know anything about Hartford, but um, Hartford has like kind of a bad name. And so my thought process when I was first buying my first house, I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. 
all my family and my friends, they were moving to like, you know, Bloomfield, Windsor, which is like on the outskirts of um, Hartford and it's considered like a better neighborhood, it's more suburb. And so while they were moving into those areas and buying one family homes, I had a different vision. And not to knock anybody's choices, but I can promise you that all of them now are either looking to buy multifamily properties or wish that they had. And so I had a different vision because I felt like I was born and raised in Hartford. And instead of running from the city and dogging it and talking bad about it, I'm like, I'm gonna be a pillar in my community. And I, and I am, and I was, because I'm that landlord that when I see trash on the street, I pick it up. If I see mattresses on the side of the road, I'm calling the city. And it doesn't even have to be on my street. I'm calling and I'm like, somebody needs to come pick this up. Oh, are you the owner? Nope. I, but I live right around the corner and I'm be, I'm doing my part by helping to keep the city clean. So I'm calling it in. And so that's just who I am. And I've always said, be the change you want to see. Stop complaining. And it's like, you know, in the hood, we call it the hood. You know, we, we always want to talk about, oh, this is not right. And this is not right. And it's like, but what are you doing to make it better instead right. of instead of complaining? And so that was my philosophy. I was like, I'm going to stay in the community that I was born and raised and grew up in, and I'm going to make it better. I'm going to be the pillar. I'm going to be the change that I want to see. And that is what I, that's what I did. I put my money where my mouth is. And you know what? My kids born and raised here, went to college, turned out fine. And everybody's like, oh, you, you buying a house in Hartford? Oh my goodness. Like, why would you do that? And, and I'm like, because this is the city that I was born and raised. I grew up and I'm going to make it better. And I'm going to be again, the change that I want to see. And so right. that is what made me stay in this location. Um, but I could talk about that. All shout, out, shout out to Bob. I mean, he always say, he always say, shout out to Bob. I mean, he always say, what do, what do brothers and sisters want to do when they get a little bit of paper, when they get a little bit of something, they want to move out. out. Right. Instead right. of instead of instead of building within and 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 flourishing that community and adding right. value to where you grew up, to where you stepped at, to where you uh, flourished at, you, you feel yep. me? Um, they want to do a lot of that. So I, I think that's dope what you're doing. Um, and then and, and now and, and salute. In the area that I'm living in right now, um, the regentrification is happening. Yeah. Because the, the house that I live in right now is a historic house, and they refurbished it from top to floor to bottom. And I have literally people knocking on my door, offering me to sell my house. And I'm like, they're going to offer you a bag. They're going to offer you the one. big bag. Yeah, they're going to offer you, you the big bag. bag. You, it... you won't get this one. And <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, hold on to that. <laughs> that's what, that's what it's, 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 a, it's like a brownstone. It's a brick. It's, it's beautiful. And so I see it happening right before our eyes. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to just say it. I'm going to call it like it is. You know, I hear people say, oh, you know, re regentrification, regentrification. And you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to just say it. Go. Shoot. I'm like, Shoot. I, you know what? Come on with it. Because if that means that this is going to bring up my property value, because certain people, they're going to take care of their home and take pride in it and keep it maintained versus Shay Shay in them, then you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. You know, you, you, but here's the thing. You had an opportunity to buy that same building before it uh, was raised to five hundred thousand dollars. You bullshit it. You bullshit it on it. You slept, you, you slept. You fumbled it. Absolutely. So so it is what it is at the end of the day, and I can talk that because I have been here over twenty five years in this community, and I watch and see how people take care of certain things. They don't take care of it, and they neglect it. And you know the the mentality. Well, I don't own it, so because you don't own it, that means you shouldn't have to sweep and clean and remove garbage and make sure that where you live is like, come on now, let's make it make sense. So when the certain people come in and they raise the value of the property and they keep in the grass cut and they keeping it beautified, I have no problem with that. That's really yeah, I, I concur with you on that stance as far as gentrification. Um, obviously it does have, it can have some ill effects, but I think historically, um, our demographic is just on the wrong side of that issue. 
Mm -hmm. And um, in that particular circumstance, it's a hell of a tidal wave to endure when it comes to your neighborhood, especially if it's a place that is nostalgic to you and you're attached to it emotionally. Mm -hmm. And then you see a wave of investment come through and you're not involved in that. It's a triggering experience. Yeah. So I, I, I emotion, definitely get emotion. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of things I want to highlight in what you're speaking to. The first thing that comes to mind is the power of influence, right? Um, we spoke about how someone in your family, which is, uh, you know, a blessing, was able to um, serve as, you know, a stepping stone or a source of a source of influence, which has now served as a spark to proliferate into this culture. What it is, it's like you've established a culture in your family to now it's it's flourishing and i'm sure you serve as a source and your family serves as a source of inspiration to a lot of other people so that's the first thing all it takes is one person that's you it. know to mobilize on an idea it's one thing to say it mm -hmm. you know but you know it's different when you actually go yeah. and you mm -hmm. accomplish because to be quite frank when you step out on limb and you tell people I'm going to do this, in most cases, people don't believe you, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they they, they want to see something tangible um, that's in alignment with what you said. And when you're able to sustain that, show and prove over time, that's where people, you know, can kind of see what's really going on and if you're serious or not, you know? So that's the first thing that comes to mind. The other thing is, can you speak to the power of relationship building, um, specifically considering that you manage multiple properties. For example, I have a construction management background and the value in a dependable quality contractor is like <laughs> immense, right? So with something like that, and also it, it may not even have to be someone that's working directly for you, but it can be like other investors or just someone that um, kind of gives you some intel on what's coming or, hey, I saw this property, that type of thing. How much, how significant is, is that or has that been for you and your family um, in this uh, realm of what you all have it been able to so, Oh, yeah. Um, relationships are, are extremely, extremely important because the best resource is human resource, like, you know, and maintaining, you know, connections. And thankfully, throughout my, my life, I have uh, connected with people who have crossed my path just like at the right times. And so from attorneys to um, investors to real estate agents, I have like a, a community or a network of of people who, regardless like it doesn't even matter like what field it's in. If I need something, I kind of have like a Rolodex where like, oh, okay, we need, um, you know, I need my taxes done. Okay, I'm gonna call Bob because that's my my tax guy and he's a attorney, so he's just not like you know little rinky just tax accountant. He's actual a tax attorney. So I've been working with Bob for oh my goodness over. 20 years um or if like you know like you said with having properties like if i have a plumbing issue which i have a, a, a plumbing issue right now and i establish a relationship with a plumber um and so again he's you know a full legit company anything in any one of our properties i know i can call him he's reliable he's dependable he's professional um and timely and so you know if we see a property i have at least three or four real estate agents that I can call. Um, and my son, he has investors in his back pocket. Like they're calling him like, you got any deals? You, you have any deals? You, you know, or they'll tell him, man, I have this deal. I'm having a hard time getting it. And they'll like pass it to him. And then he go in there and do his little one, two. Um, because my son is just, just very personable. He just like, it's just like a very charming personal, you know, young man and I like I think they like to see like oh he's a young you know guy trying to like you know and they you know take to that so you know again relationships building relationships having a network um, or community 
is extremely important because like you can't do this alone like you you just cannot do this alone and even like back with my father my father he was very very instrumental in this whole evolution of us getting into this this field um and he was able to like i said pass the torch my son he don't want to do any type of handyman work he's more you know he's a millennial so he's more into like you know wholesaling and on the computer and and you know digit the digital world but my kid's father he is a hands-on person so like i said anytime we need to turn over an apartment he does everything i'm talking about laying the floors changing the sink changing the vanity putting up sheetrock putting in the toilet you name it he can do just about anything and and again whatever he can't we have a list of people who we have been connected with throughout the years that we can just call and so you know just maintaining those relationships is is, is so important it's, it's it's you know it's so important um i agree i definitely want to um stay in contact with you as you all start to like think more into the land uh oh. option purchasing the land uh, I have one but, question about that. yeah that's what i was gonna say like have you looked anywhere like have you thought about any particular areas or is it just what, something that's just on the base you're just on the basis of that thought what so, makes you want to go from real estate to land i mean it's i've been wanting the land for a very very long time um and i just kind of just was just procrastinating and really because that's to, really to be honest that's the only thing that was really stopping me because like i said i've had conversations with um with my aunt and my uncle who are kind of like the overseers of the land in alabama i've had conversations with them um you know kind of just scratching the surface and i really could have pursued it probably more than i have um and so really is i would just say it was procrastination that just hasn't pushed me to to really like follow through and really like go full fledged with it but now i am i'm ready I'm, I'm really really ready and as far as um like location uh, even my son he just he told me the other day oh i saw this this um this this uh lot i think he said it was like a lot and at first i just was like a lot i want more than that. i want some acres and so then i had to say you know what maybe you know this is not a bad idea maybe you should just go look at it because you know you could start out small and you could kind of like you know get your feet wet a little bit and kind of you know you know start start where something local where it's close to where i live and so um i've been really really like on the different websites now um i'm in a, another group where they you know they're posting different websites where you can um find land kind of like all over and so i prefer my preference is to be somewhere warm <laughs> because my goal is if I had it my way I, I would move there to live like so my goal is when I get land I want to live there and live on that land like so Connecticut goodbye like I'm over Connecticut <laughs> I've, so I've been here all my life born and raised um and I'm literally like ready to just like like I said say goodbye and go somewhere warm because my my thought is I want to have land so that not only that I can uh, develop, but like I want to, you know, be able to grow my own food. I want to be able to be self-sustaining. I want to mm -hmm. be able to have like, you know, a couple tiny homes on there, like a little yep. retreat where people can come and like just a little getaway. Like, so, you know, and I know I have to start somewhere. So, you know, I, like I, I'm going to be realistic about it, but that is my ultimate goal is like, I, I really want something where, like my whole family can, can can come if they want to if they you know they chose to um so That's for local you know. i like i said i really want to be somewhere warm um we ha we had went to florida and we were looking at florida at one point in time um but i'm not so sure if i want to go to florida now so i'm open like so to answer your question i don't have a specific like state i'm, I'm really open to that but i i do want it to be somewhere warm and if it's not it doesn't have to be warm all year round but at least warm majority of the time because i want to grow my own food i want to be able to like go in my backyard walk outside and have access to because you know i'm a vegetarian and i'm into holistic and to wellness and so that's very important for me and you know the lifestyle that i live right now 
I'm not able to do that. So I want to, you know, move forward more into that direction. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, considering what you just said, why not advocate for our state, right, fellas? I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, come on, come on, AZ. Hey, cheapest land, cheapest land in the country, they, they said. Oh, well, then and, I need to. And a and misconception, a misconception about Arizona um, is that the entire state is just like, Hades just burning up, right? Uh, <laughs> northern Northern Arizona in particular has a much milder climate. Um, it even snows in Northern Arizona. I know for a lot of people that's just not like even like people don't know that, right? So um, the Valley, right? Phoenix, Yuma, all of those that's, places. That's the desert. Extreme. It's extreme, right? So Northern Arizona um, forest, right? For the most part, but there's also like high desert, right? So it's desert land, meaning dry or drier, but it's not necessarily um, it's like extreme temperature. You okay. Know? So um, that's akin to like where our space is. It's in a higher elevation, um, like roughly 6,200, um, I believe. So we're higher than Denver, right? So it's milder temperatures, um, but it's still a desert. It's desert yeah. landscape. It's just higher elevation. Um and like the brother said, I mean, it's reasonably priced. Oh, I need uh, to sure. it, then. I need to definitely check it out. <laughs> Absolutely, we can we can definitely uh, point you in, in in a couple of directions if, if that's do. of interest to you. It's one thing I want to um, another thing I want to highlight in what you were saying. You mentioned how um, your son has developed um, his enterprise at such a scale to where right. he's got investors in his back pocket at this mm -hmm. point. So, um, so. I think a lot of us are familiar with the capital issues that a lot of people of our demographic have. Yeah. Right. Your your son has a capital issue, but it's a different capital issue, right? He almost has too much capital, or he's got a, so much capital at his disposal um, due to these relationships that he's built. I'm sure he really has to discipline himself to fight that greed monster and not just jump into things just because it's available. So I think that's a testament to the fact that regardless of what level you're at, mm -hmm. new levels, new devils, right? Exactly. And, and in most instances, that devil is you or it can be. <laughs> you. So it's all about discipline. So I, I, I think the challenge is constant as far as like understanding, like really um, being clear about your, your personal vision staying true to it and mm -hmm. being disciplined right i think i think that's key to what you said so it's just a it just serves as a reminder because you know how people say oh man if i get if i just get this like all their problems are gonna go away nope. and that's not the case mm -hmm. you know um there's always something that you got to work through there's always some kind of um challenge that is presented from within for you to conquer so mm -hmm. i think that's a great example just to kind of like reiterate that point you know it, there there is there really is no finish line to any of this no it isn't it's, it's, I, literally it's a marathon. Told, I literally just told my son that today that is so full circle i told him i said you have to just uh, enjoy the journey i said you can't focus on the the, the destination because mm -hmm. the fun is along the way it's not even the end result all the fun is on the way to what you're trying to attain. That's yeah. yeah. Success journeys. Success, most most interesting part of the success stories are in the journey. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, you know what? That's we're, for sure. we're we're creators, right? And so we like to like. There's there's a, a, a saying where like you know you want your hands in the clay. You want to be molding it right, and you want to like be like literally able to like feel all your senses like feel touch see and like really be like in the, the the thick of molding your reality versus you wake up and then you're just there there's no fun in that you know there's no fun in that so indeed so i got i got one thing to say and then i do want you to uh maybe share your contact information so people know how to contact you as well but okay. I, I've, I've observed you and witnessed you mention how your father was able to uh, passed down his blessing and uh, of of his uh, being able to work with his hands. 
with, with your the children, uh, your father's children, or your yeah, your, yeah. your children's father. <laughs> yeah, uh, but what I would like to tell him if he's not already doing it is to make sure he passes that information down to and that knowledge right. and that skill. Right, right, Cause it right, sounds right. like your son is already picked up like the real estate side and he's, he's moving with that into the next stage. But yeah. if that, if that knowledge and that skill, that mm -hmm. real hands-on skill dies out, then we're going to lose that along oh, the way. So goodness. since he wow. has it, please pass that on. That is so powerful. And I, I thank you for that because we've actually talked about that. He was like, he said to me, he was like, babe, can you imagine if I didn't like, you know, work beside your father and learn all of this and pick up these skills? Because again, my son, he wasn't interested. And just for you to but say- But that's that, okay. That, he's, still, he's taking his own way. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you, you know, his, his father is not happy about that, right? <laughs> but no, I appreciate that. That is that is very important and that is powerful. And I am going to let him know that because he did recognize that. He was like, I'm using this. And he has all of my father's equipment, his, wow. his tools, his expensive equipment. My father left everything for him. It's, it's, it's energy like, on that. It's energy yes, on that. Yes. And so he's like, you know, he was like, I'm just so glad I was able to, like, you know, take this on. But I'm going to let him know, like, now you got to pass that on to somebody. We don't know who that who that somebody is going to be. But you know what? That's okay because God will make a way. He'll make a way that we'll, we'll find someone that's willing and ready and interested. So thank you. I appreciate that. That is powerful. Yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. And then please, where, please where, share what's your social media contact. so I can put it on the ticker? Yep. Okay. So um, my social media. So Instagram, I am Miss Holistic. As you can see back there. Um, and I am on Facebook, Stacy with an E, The Rock Waller. And it sounds like, you know, the dog, The Rock Waller, but it's The Rock, like The Rock, R O C K. And then my last name is Waller, W A L L E R. So you can find me on both um, social media and Instagram. I haven't, I, I don't have a TikTok yet. I know I need to get one and I plan I ain't to. on that either. I ain't on that either. <laughs> so I, how do you spell the Instagram? Um, Instagram is um, uh, MS for Miss, and then Holistic is W H O L E um, hyphen L I S T I C. Miss Holistic. I like that. Full circle. Oh, yeah. The whole mind, body, soul. That's how I, that's where I got that spelling from, is, is not the traditional spelling of holistic. Is that right or wrong? So this is this is my spelling. I literally created this, came up with this spelling um, to to encompass the whole person, you know, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So, so I think you said spelling. you said oh, W H O L E hyphen L I S T I C. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hogan. I found it. I spelled it. Right. You found it. Yep. Okay. You see it. You you see it, Crondo. H O L whole dash H O L no whole dash L I let's check it L I S T I C right yes yeah yeah well I just want to there we go thank you again for joining us and um sharing your experience um again um I'm sure you already serve as a source of inspiration hopefully we can amplify that here um the theme of our platform here is to inspire people to, you know, spring into action. Um, if we can do it, you know, who's to say anyone else can't, you know, so that's, um, you know, beautiful energy. We're going to keep this flame burning. Um, I'm sure at some point we will reconnect with oh, you, yeah. um, especially considering your interest to purchase land. Yes. We know a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, and I'm sure we could benefit from your expertise as far as property management and all yeah, because I, I was I was interested in the multifamily homes. That was my thing too. Uh, I wanted to get into that. So I definitely would like to collect connect with you on that. Me, me, oh, yeah. me, and, me and my girl was thinking about at one point having conversations about that. Um, so I would like to inquire with you about that. If you need to inquire with us about some land, especially here in Arizona, like it's probably like top five cheapest uh states uh -huh. to buy land. Uh and that's that's not a plan, that's a fact. I need to get up. Um, yeah, so uh, there's websites that we can refer you to, and, and even in our area. Um, yep. 
So, yeah, I would just uh, keep uh, stay mindful about that, and we'll stay mindful about connecting with you on the other things as well. But like I said, uh, same games, just different fields. Exactly. You know, it's all yeah, about yeah. the ownership. You feel me? So yeah. it's all about that. Yep, definitely. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed myself. And I definitely want to stay connected, like you said, because I, I believe we could share information, connect and collaborate. Um, so thank you again. I appreciate this. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to close it out with our mission statement, like we always yeah. do. At the Growth Spot, we are unified in action to build, protect, and expand a fruitful legacy of love, equity, growth, ancestry, cooperation, and yield. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace.